Hey everybody, Professor Klein back in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University today to talk to you guys about what makes up your skin. All right, I've got all the skin models here in the lab. There's already a video on this huge skin model. So I'm gonna throw this away and focus on these over here. And let's start with the smallest one. And we know skin has three different main sections, if you will. It's got the epidermis, which are like these top layers. You'll notice it's thicker over here, thinner over here. The epidermis can be real thick or thin. We call that thick skin and thin skin. And then we have what's called the dermis, which is from here down to about this yellow stuff. Once you hit the yellow stuff, which is adipose tissue, you are in the hypodermis. Down in here is the hypodermis, and of course it goes across on this model. Back to the epidermis, and let's see some of the specific layers. In this thicker skin, it's actually thicker, but it has five layers compared to thin skin, which only has four. Let's take a look at the five. Up top, you have the stratum corneum. Then you have the stratum lucidum or lucidum, that real small layer right there. Then it's painted in a little bit of white here, stratum granulosum. Then the stratum spinosum. And lastly, real thin layer on the bottom, stratum basale. In thin skin, you do not have the stratum lucidum, so you only have stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basale. The monarch I like to use is come, let's get sun burnt to remember the five layers from superficial to deep but then with thin skin i say you gotta lose the lucidum for thin skin disclaimer don't actually get sunburnt but it's a great way to remember thick skin and thin skin back to the model and we get into the dermis now the dermis technically has a papillary layer and a reticular layer the papillary layer is like this top 10-ish percent and you'll notice the fibers look a little bit different i know it's tough to see but the fibers up here are loose connective tissue fibers but as soon as you get down into here it becomes your dense irregular connective tissue in the reticular section so dermis made up of the papillary layer and then the larger reticular layer as seen on your screen. Now what are these big white things? These are sweat glands bringing sweat up to the surface. Blue would be a vein, red would be an artery, lots of blood vessels going through here. But you also notice these things. These are receptors. These specifically are Meisner's, Recep or Meisner's receptors. Tough to say, spell it for you on the screen here. These detect light touch. And they come all the way up and they push into these bumps that are called dermal papillae. These bumps are called dermal papillae. They fit in with the epidermal ridges, which would be these right here. Now I'm pointing at stratum basale, stratum spinosum, but together these little ridges are the epidermal ridges that fit in between the dermal papillae. Anyways, Meisner's corpuscle, detects light touch. This would be representing a nerve. Nerve would transmit that light touch eventually to the brain. But we got another receptor way deep down in here. It's green, it kind of looks like an onion. The Pacinian corpuscle, which detects deep pressure or touch. And that makes sense, that's deeper in the skin versus Meisner's corpuscle, which detects light touch, which is more superficial. But let's jump over to thin skin here and notice one major difference between thick 
and thin. Yes, the stratum corneum is extremely thick in thick skin and it's much thinner and thin, but in thin skin, you also have hair. This is hair right here. Hair sits within what's called a hair follicle. This one, you've cut it open so you can see inside the hair follicle where the hair would actually be. These on either side are sebaceous glands. See them in full over here, cut over here. Sebaceous glands secretes sebum, which is an oily substance that lubricates the hair. So hair is only found in thin skin. Thick skin would be like the palms of your hand, the soles of your feet and your lips for where thick skin is found in the body. And there's a muscle that attaches to a hair follicle. It's a smooth muscle called the erector pili, responsible for erecting those hair follicles. When you get goosebumps or something like that and your hair stands up, then that's the response of the erector pili muscle. And that's basically it on this model but something that's really important that you should be able to do as an anatomy student is to take all these structures and find them on a similarly but different looking model. For example, let's work our way backwards. This big red muscle, you guys tell me, I'll give you about five seconds to think about it. What would this muscle be called? And if you are thinking erector pili, you'd be correct. It's a type of smooth muscle attached to the hair follicle with the hair inside. we got the hypodermis down here with the yellow adipose, red artery, blue vein. On this one is nice because they put yellow for nerves. So anything that's yellow would be nerves other than this adipose tissue. Yellow lines, I guess, would be the nerves. And you'll notice the nerves are going up to the miser's corpuscle. I'll zoom way in because you can see a full one here. It kind of looks like a maybe an Easter egg, but when you cut it open, it looks maybe more like a fingerprint or a footprint. So, question for you what do miser's corpuscles detect? What do miser's corpuscles detect? I'll give you about three seconds here. They detect light touch or pressure, light touch or pressure. That's different than Poussinian corpuscles, not green like on this model, but still onion shaped deeper down in the dermis and even the hypodermis here. These detect deep pressure or touch for the Poussinian corpuscle. Well, this is a new model, which means we have new receptors on this one that aren't on the other one. Now notice this nerve that comes up and just kind of ends and it does protrude into the epidermis. We got the stratum basale, we got the stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum. This yellow one would be the stratum lucidum. And then you guys tell me, think about what would this top one be called? Most superficial layer of the epidermis. This is the stratum corneum. So what's this yellow thing that ends right here? This is called a free nerve ending. I'll get real close, zoom in, focus for you. That's a free nerve ending which detects pain and temperature. That is different than this one over here. You guys see this one over here? It looks like a free nerve ending, but see how there's these bubbles or kind of bulbs at the end? This is what's called a Merkel's disc. A Merkel's disc does go into the epidermis like a free nerve ending, but a Merkel's disc detects light touch or pressure similar to this Miser's corpuscle. Up top, these bumps. You guys remember the names of these bumps? Lots of quiz questions coming at you here in this video. Anatomy is active. You've got to be active with your learning. So these bumps are called the dermal papillae. Dermal papillae. And remember the dermis has both a papillary layer, this top 10%, and a reticular section as well. Papillary has loose connective tissue. Reticular has dense irregular connective tissue. Now you can really see, see how like these 
fibers, which would represent the collagen fibers, are traveling in many different directions. I'll throw up a histology slide of dense irregular connective tissue so that you can see what this is representing versus up here, just loose connective tissue. It's kind of a general term for loose connective tissue. But these bumps are the dermal papillae with the epidermal ridges coming down into them. Almost finished, but we got one last model to go through and the glaring difference, other than some of the colors down here, is this darker area of the stratum spinosum. And I wanna line these up side by side so you guys can see the darker tone right here versus the lighter tone over here. This is done on purpose and this is representing different skin colors or skin tone. A darker skin tone would be right in here with this darker color and a lighter over here. Now there's so many different shades and tones and here are some popping up on the screen for you of someone's skin color or skin tone, but what within the skin actually determines skin tone? Well, within the stratum basale, we have these specific cells called melanocytes. And here's a picture popping up of, of melanocyte. And melanocytes produce melanin. Now, melanin is skin pigment. So the more melanin somebody has, the darker their skin will appear. Now, genetically, everyone has a kind of a preset amount of melanin that's produced, but things like the sun or tanning beds can artificially or naturally produce or stimulate the production of more melanin. But it's actually these melanocytes that produce melanin. But the awesome thing is every single person has the same amount of melanocytes. It's just how much melanin is produced is different between skin tones. So when you go out into the sun and you get a sun burn or you get tan and your, your skin gets darker, that's more melanin being produced. There is somewhat of a protective mechanism for darker skin and more melanin against the sun, but too much sun can cause issues as well. And if you've ever gotten freckles that come out during the sun or the summertime with the sun exposure, freckles are concentrated areas of melanocytes that can produce more melanin. So that's what freckles are. But in 30 seconds, I'm going to go through these structures because you probably already know them all. You got adipose tissue down here in the hypodermis. You got a sweat gland coming on up. You got a Pacinian corpuscle with a nerve attached to it. Nerves also attached to the miser's corpuscle. You got that free nerve ending here. No Merkel's disc on this one. No Merkel's disc, but a free nerve ending right here. You got the erector pili muscle coming into the hair follicle with a big old hair in there and a sebaceous gland right next to it. Red for artery, blue for vein. Dermis has two layers, reticular, papillary, stratum basale, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, yellow one, stratum lucinum, and stratum corneum. But wait, there is something anatomically wrong with these two models specifically. And this big model right here, I'll throw this big one in here as well. Can you guys tell me what is anatomically wrong with these skin models? We might have to call the manufacturers and let them know there's something anatomically wrong. Comment if you know it. What is anatomically wrong? Check my next video for the answer to that question. If you already know it, share it, but I'll share the answer and why that's the answer in my next skin video. That's all for this one. Thanks for watching. I'm Professor Klein from the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University.